Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Private area, sir. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private in... Mr. Weed Twister. I'm sorry. You are trespassing. I'm glad we speak the same language. Thank you for coming on such short A great treat. 
tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. I have yet to see a mystery I haven't solved. And I don't give a toss about my fame, if that's what you're worried about. My lips are sealed. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. You assume too much, Madame Carlyle. The crime scene, if such exists, is never where I begin. Do as you wish. However, I expect a result in a timely fashion. Fernsby will take over from here. I'm Mr. Fernsby, the butler. I will try to assist you as best I can. Where would you like to start your investigation, sir? Where's the family? I like to prime the suspects a bit. Madame Carlyle's family members are all on this floor. Maybe start in the sitting room. If you'll follow me this way. Priming, you say? That sounds interesting. It's like planting seeds that will grow into telling me actions or words. I see. Do you wish to plant any such seeds before I speak to it? I already have. And fruit they bear. You are marked. Self-controlled and always set ahead. All qualities of murderer would benefit from them. Wouldn't you say? I wouldn't know. If that is all, sir, please do come and find me when you feel ready to inspect the crime scene. Just one question. Is that burnt leather I can smell in here? Unusual for a butler to burn leather. I don't, I, I don't know what you, what you... Seeds, Mr. Fernsby. Seeds. Why waste away in front of the books when he can play like that? That music makes my heart sore. You and me both. Listen, Gregory. Something's off. Who is throwing stuff around here? Come on!
If you're dressed like a Detective 47, you might as well act. If you're dressed like a Detective 47, you might as well act the detective. I suggest you go talk to the butler. Mr. Whitmer, are you ready to inspect the crime scene now? I am. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madam's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather Just unusual keep calm. situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madam Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you. So please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. 
A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Sir? Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. I'm sure there's more to find in Zachary's room. Use your camera to scan the dead body, 47. Throat markings indicate a rare, short lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47.
Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here's the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps do you prefer searching the manor for clues first? That is the door to Rebecca's room. the right clearance, mister. Please, don't waste my time. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. It doesn't exist. Right. I'll double check and get back to you.
and try to get an explanation. Not even an apology. I mean, believing I'm on the dead is not exactly how I'd like to spend a week, and then she shows up like that. I nearly shat myself. I mean, she really got her usual icy self this time. Well, I don't know why you're so upset. Do you realize how much I've had to deal with because of her sudden death? Huh, of course you don't. You've never done an honest day's work in your life. Obviously, it's all This is a restricted area, and I can't let you through. You gotta move on. Greetings, sir. Looks like we can't. All the transfers of funds and privileges I've been through have been bulletproof. He intercepted. That's it. One foot in front of the other. Check out. You verified his identity. I vetted him thoroughly. He's good. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except... Perhaps I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough. Right. Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. 
Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle, but who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Anything else you want to pry from my... Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um... Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, Father says Zachary and Alexi used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary tops himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Mr. Patrick. Can I do anything for you? Uh, yes, actually. Could you speed up time so I don't die from boredom? I fear I may not survive an entire weekend in this shit hole. Perhaps a brisk walk in the garden would do you good. I said speed up time, not my party. Of course, sir. I'll come back to Have a kind of you, Mr. Fosby. I hope... Sir. I think the dealers have cut us from our own will. Yep. Imagine the scandal if the first born son didn't pick up the torch. That would never happen. Sorry, sir, got orders. Can't let you through. Sorry for the inconvenience.
dead body before. It must have been awful. Do you think it was a suicide? I don't know. Madame Carlyle certainly doesn't think so. Why else would she have asked that detective to come here? For murder? Was the blood? No, not that I saw. Yeah, I can't let you pass. I'm sorry, sir.
Please stay back. Gotta dig this place. Ancestral graveyard, trophy room, and the office safe is hidden behind a portrait <laughs> with a secret mechanism for uncovering it. It's got real soul. First time here? Yep. Yeah, it's impressive, all right. A safe in Madame Carla's office. I bet that's where she keeps the file on Arthur Edwards. Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of a code. Maybe have a look around the office, 47.
Are you okay? staff has started within the last week. Not that I'm aware. Just want to keep Madam Carlyle safe. I'd like to know about these details. My perfect mother. Ah, who would have thought? You fucked up, didn't you? Stay. In your own death? A major, grandiose cock up, I'd say. Be quiet, Gregory. Well, it shows you're only human, after all. I never would have guessed. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Clear. Please advise. Over. Look alive. The proverbial Scare shit the is area. about to hit the fan. Oh, no, I'm any surprises. Roger that.
interesting story. I actually, yeah, I actually, later. 